Now, when we come out of the forest area, it's not as steep, the percentage is not as much, but then we have that wind factor and also the heat. Although the heat today has dropped down a lot, uh, we did have this cloud for you know a number of hours here. This morning looked very good, then it cloud over, so it cooled down a bit. So it's not going to be as warm, maybe, as we've had in the past on this Mung Bon too. So that will help a lot. But from Chelly Renard, it will depend on what way the wind is blowing. And it does change a lot during the day. So we've seen sometimes where they have a headwind here. That will have a major effect on the race. But if it's a little bit of a side wind, well, then that's where it will hurt real big time. My goodness, a pink bus just crossed uh, in front of our leader here and uh, the crowds have completely ignored uh, the barriers which have been put here. Impossible to police 21.5 kilometres of mountain road, I'm afraid. And as a result, you have to rely on the best of the spectators. And that was not the best of them, my friend, uh, almost getting in the way. I think people don't quite believe the speed, Sean. If they hadn't experienced this kind of thing before, the approach speed is quick by these guys. Well, yes, they're going you know, amazingly quick. And I suppose people, when they're on a real steep uh, part of a climb, they do not realise they're coming as quickly. But again, people are here a long time, a lot of alcohol intake, and their calculation, I think, sometimes can be a bit out. Hopefully we don't have any incident here because we see the way the riders are coming through here. With you know just under 15 kilometers to go, it's a funnel already. When we get into the final number of kilometers, it's, it's barriered off, of course, but that's not possible to do you know the total time 15 kilometer barriers. And there is going to be times when it's going to be scary for the riders. Uh, the organizers, uh, the ASO, asked the riders to tweet all their followers and ask them, please just give them some space. Uh, Robert Miller said, um. There is a road that you're standing on. We'd like to use all of it, please. And I think perhaps that was the best of it. Uh, but absolutely no chance as well. You saw them come under the 15 kilometres to go banner. And in fact, there were hoardings underneath it. And they were just standing in front of them. Uh, the width probably was around about six feet. There will be no width whatsoever. And they will be clearing like a wave. And waving flags is not a great idea. And you might think you can sprint fast. But you can't go as quickly as these guys. I love the passion, but I hope everyone stays safe today. Fourteen point three kilometers to go. One uh, minute and eight now is uh, is the gap, and uh, into the woodland. And uh, some kind soul, at least, and I hope he's being kind, uh, spraying them with some water. Um, yes, sometimes it's welcome, sometimes it's not, but uh, I don't suppose you have chance to refuse it if it's hurled at you. 14.2 uh, kilometres to go, and uh, this, is a, this is a nice, brave push here by Chavanel. He's on a special bike today in terms of colour, um, I presume just because he's going into the red. Goodness only knows, maybe it's spurring him on. Uh, we'll ask him afterwards if he's successful. And uh, they're weaving all over the place, and it's a, a day today where you suddenly get found out, Sean. Um, you suddenly reach your limit, and that's it. Yes, and we see Tony Martin there coming to almost to a standstill, but he's been right in the front, and uh, you know he's keeping uh, his uh, man out of um, out of danger, keeping to the front. Uh, Kwiatkowski, who was you know uh, having a real good race here, and uh, it's going to be uh, a big one for him today because Quintana is going to challenge him for this young jersey classification. But we see when a rider you know does a number of kilometres in the front, even Tony Martin when it kicks up, just comes to a standstill. Well, it's a, a day for glory, and Andy Schleck has just going backwards. If you thought that this day was going to be a uh, rekindling of emotions between him and Alberto Contador, then think again. It's going to be about just getting to the top uh, at all. Oh, my goodness. He's weaving all over, over the place, and that was a, a spectator actually get, offering up a, uh, a sympathetic hand there, to be honest. He was in the gutter. Yes, sir. Uh really in the gutter and uh, you know he's um, uh, really come to a standstill there and uh, he just uh, after being hanging on he has had to be under pressure for quite a while here and uh, just when he loses contact we can see there he have just difficulty steering his bike 13.8 kilometers to go he's not going to be the last of the big names we saw right Eschadal as well a man who's more than adept at climbing one of the first to be found out today and Chavanel rides on with his newly liveried bike and uh, any thoughts of bridging over to him just calming 
I'm just wondering if Cadell Evans has got something special for us today. I would love to see it. Absolutely love it. Uh, there he is. Uh, you can just see uh, his uh, black and uh, red livery. And they're all just having a go today, Sean. Uh, uh, Sky, frankly, don't have the manpower to do their usual thing of setting a tempo and uh, winding these guys in. And then if it does come down to just Chris Froome, it might well be uh, all the action, that explosive talent that he has when he needs, will have to be used today. Yes, uh, well, for the moment we've seen there uh, um, an attack by the Escatel rider. It looks like Ir Irazar, but um, no... Uh, no response from the big favourites, but um, I'm not surprised. Still with 13.5 kilometres to go, and they're going to, you know, leave the um, the guys setting the pace in the front walk away. We can see it's uh, Velix from uh, Omega Pharma Quickstep who is, uh, you know, setting a real strong pace at the moment, and they will just allow a team to do that because they know uh, Roy they're going on his own. He's not going to pull out a big advantage. He's going to go on the attack, take five, eight seconds of advantage, and then he will hang there. But you need to be, you know, special to go on at this point and continue on all the way to the finish with just over 13k. Gloden's gone. Uh, there'll be plenty more along the way. Uh, they are suffering all over the place. Rib long. Um, and uh, well, I'm not sure. I'm never quite sure whether that just um, uh, causes something of a bit, a bit of a surprise when you do get a, a hand on the backside as, as help. It can be distracting if you are focused and you're setting a rhythm. I think for those further down the mountain, whose day is done, it's uh, it's just a reminder of just how much the fr fans appreciate what you're doing. Uh, Morabito is there for uh, Cadell Evans, incidentally. Uh, TJ Van Garden has had such a dreadful time in this uh, Tour de France. Cadell, um, as well, has said he's never uh, felt so bad while fit or performed so badly while fit. You never know today. He might have just found his legs, and it would be lovely. Uh, you know, stage win for Cadell would just be magnificent. 13.2 kilometres to go. Really, though, the thoughts and the focus have to be on Chris Froome. He is, of course, the wearer of the yellow jersey. He is in that position by a healthy margin of 2 minutes and 28 over Boca Molima uh, of Belkin, who is here, and Alberto Contador, likewise. Roman Kreuziger also in the mix for uh, Team Saxo Tinkoff, teammate of Contador. Lawrence Ten Dam as well. Jakob Fulsang, Fulsang for uh, Astana is here, but it's Kwiatkowski and Quintana, 7 and 8 in the general classification, sitting at 4 minutes 44 and 5 minutes 18, respectively, that uh, you might have to look to to do something today. And maybe Joaquim Rodriguez as well, still under the six-minute mark, running in 10th place. Wow, there's so many options today, and uh, or, or maybe uh, potential winners. And uh, we're just going to see whether they've got the firepower, the manpower, and the sheer will to make it. Chavanel at the moment is making a pretty good fist of this. 42 seconds. And we're hearing that uh, Nicholas Roche is uh, also dropped by the pack today. Uh, there'll be plenty more. There'll be plenty more, Sean. But um, it's still a very, very high-quality group toward the front. It's uh, yeah, a real... Uh a real class group here and um, we can see here Quintana goes in the attack and um, this is going to you know uh, set the alarm bells Come. ring certainly. play. Oh, this would be magnificent. Now what's the response? Quintana can go long now he's away down don't forget. Five minutes and 18. Uh, Kwiatkowski might be the man who's most threatened by this and Quintana has gone. Now if he starts bridging to some of the other riders that might act as a foil that's sort of target time for him and I've seen him do this before Sean. Yes, well, uh, this is the uh, section of the climb where it is really steep and he has to do it in the earlier part because when we get to Shelley Renard uh, and it opens out a bit, the percentage is not uh, great and this is where he can pull out a big advantage. Um, we could see that uh, Velitz was setting a good pace and that was for uh, uh, Kwiatkowski because he likes, I think, uh, just a, a, a real solid, strong pace. He doesn't like the attacking him, but Quintana not allowing it to continue on. They are throwing in a big attack and going for it. Quintana goes for it, a man that many, including myself, thought might make the podium of this Tour de France. Will he? Can he? Well, he's going to answer that right now. He's launched himself off. Movistar of uh, shone so brightly today, and that's the reason why. That was the plan. We mentioned it earlier on. This Philip Gilbert world champion. Not going to be his day today. Too big a man for a day like this. You need to be able to skip up the mountain. Light of weight and uh, wealth. Uh, solid of purpose. And Quintana is bridging over to those who've just rolled off the front here.
and there he is 12.4 kilometers to go 41 seconds is uh, uh, the gap from the leader uh, but soon surely that leader may well be called Quintana 12.4 to go Sean still no response from these guys no 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 big attack or no big response from any of the big favorites but again we see Sky here putting uh, Peter Kinnock on the front uh, with Richie Port in his wheel and um, you know they're going to just set a good strong pace here and if you have somebody Chris Froome has two teammates to do that is a great situation to be in because Quintana is uh, you know taking it up very early and when you get to Shelley Renard from there on it is going to be a big battle to make it all all the way to the finish it's going to you know burn energy very quickly and if you have a teammate to do the pace setting well then perfect situation for the yellow jersey is definitely dropped but even does drop riders here at the back of the peloton uh, Stefano just uh, thought he was going to have a chat with Andy Schleck, not a bit of it. Uh, he's still got to get it over the mountain. Um, I think we may well just largely ignore Stefano from now on um, if he doesn't take that as too much of an offence because there's going to be so much going on from now on in. 12.1 kilometres to go, 39 seconds the gap, and where is Quintana? We will have him in our sights in just a few moments' time. Uh, they're in the tree line at the moment, Sean. This is offering up just a uh, little bit of uh, protection. They're offering up a little bit of protection, these trees. They will soon emerge into what can only be described as a moonscape. Well, it certainly is a moonscape, and... Um in the trees here um, we can see there's a little bit of wind all the time so it'll be interesting that, as they come out of that uh, what way the wind what direction is going and that's just going to be uh, that's going to be very important especially for Quintana here we can see he's on his own now uh, just under 20 kilometers to go and um, if it is an unfavorable wind in the final kilometers well then that's going to be the difficult one for uh, Quintana uh, you know 15 seconds we're seeing uh, for Quintana at the moment advantage over the Christopher Froome group and all the other big favourites. We can see Christopher Froome here just uh, following the pace being set by his teammates and um, been marked by Contador of course and um, as, we, as we've been hearing most of the big favourites uh, just uh, waiting how long will they how long will they okay. wait for is the question we can see here uh, you know it's just uh, it's, it's the waiting uh, it's the waiting game for the moment uh, Quintana he is uh, you know just working quite hard at it, but not putting out a major advantage we're still getting race radio around the 15 seconds uh, Quintana ahead of uh, the Christopher Froome group 11.5 uh, uh, kilometers to go. Uh, sorry, we just had a, uh, a uh, technical failure uh, with my headset. Uh, but we're back. One man who's got his head set on the victory today is Nero Quintana. And look at him go. Uh, there is where we are heading. That is what they have to deal with today. And uh, frankly, I just cannot wait for the conclusion. 11.4 uh, kilometers only. That sounds like that will be dealt with fairly swiftly, but it's going to be another 30 minutes or so. Uh, it looks majestic. And if this is Quintana's uh, big, big play, then what a play it is, Sean. Uh, this is quality. Well, it's uh, it's a serious attack, but um, the problem for uh, Quintana is that you know the the big favourites they still have teammates here, and when you have got that uh, car to play, it's uh, a gr you know a great situation uh, for the yellow jersey to be in. Quintana is going to you know put in a lot of effort here on his own, and I am concerned when we get you know out of the uh, trees, that's where uh, Quintana will start to suffer the open uh, the open space. But with the crowd here today, there's going to be a lot of shelter. There's so many camps because the you know the spectators are five deep and most of the way to the top uh, and uh, that will help a lot but uh, will he have enough of energy will he pull out enough i suppose that is the question you know if he pulls out a, a big enough advantage before we get to that section where it does open out uh, possibly he can hold off and will they take it up? Who's going to take up the chasing? And um, will you know Christopher Froome put in a big attack if he does? Well, then that's where we will see you know uh, this group really being tested, and all the big favourites we will see immediately the ones that are just hanging in here for the moment. Borobito just handing over some uh, fluids there. Only 23 riders in the yellow jersey group, and uh, Cadell Evans is looking like soon he is not 
going to be one of them. Steps out of the saddle and just tries to relay himself back on. And uh, yes, great off pallet, unfortunately, um, for Cadell. And that, as we know, is not a good sign by him. This is Nievi and doing a great job as well. Six seconds uh, separating Nieve and Quintana at the moment. That's, a, uh, that's a, a good foil to use, and I wouldn't be surprised if these guys work together, at least in the first instance, Sean. Well, I don't know if um, if Quintana will be able to walk. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Nieve, will he be able to walk with Quintana? We see he's closing up on them very quickly, and when somebody comes to you that quick, um, it's difficult, you know, to just uh, up that pace, the uh, pace that Quintana is setting at the moment. So, I'm not sure Quintana will. Uh, sorry, Nieve will be able to match him here. He might be able to cling onto his wheel for a while, but to add anything, uh, I don't think he'll be capable of doing it. Frims on the radio, um, radioing for help beam me up maybe but uh, you've got to climb up this one I'm afraid and there is Quintana now this was the move we we're expecting and to be honest I, I didn't think that there would be so little response at this point um, we're heading don't forget for that uh, very explosive section uh, which is uh, the last six kilometers now if you can reach that uh, personally speaking, I think uh, he's going to be within sight, let's not forget, of everybody. Quick look over the shoulder there, uh, just to see what condition. Uh, Nievi just wants to know if this is a man that he's going to work with, or a man who's going to punish him. And you're not going to get punished. Oh, everyone's going to get punished on the mountain, like today, but uh, some by greater degrees. And unfortunately, uh, Cadell Evans is unable to stay with the, this yellow jersey group, and that's a shame. Well, it's all revealing itself to us at long last. Every single time that we have seen the Vontu on the tour, it's been 14 occasions, don't forget. Uh, eight of those, we have had a mountain top finish. And uh, it's never been this long before we have reached the line. So today is a celebration of the 100 years of the Tour de France, or uh, the 100th, I should say, running of the Tour de France, the centenary back in 2003. But who will take it? It's a very special day. It was designed to be tougher than any other. And has that man got what it takes? Do you think so, Sean? Well, looking at the way he's uh, riding at the moment, we see him there talking into his uh, radio with his director sportive. When you can do that, you have to be very comfortable. And uh, he's just, you know, checking to see are they walking at the right pace at the moment. Well, they've got a lot to do. 10.1 kilometres may not sound like much, but you're on the Vontu, don't forget, and the crowds go crazy. And uh, so has uh, Quintana. He's done a fantastic job of bridging over to Nieve of Uscatel, who've had nothing out of this. Let's not forget this uh, Tour de France. Today, possibly their day. They need firepower. Sky have still got that, albeit diminished ever so slightly and unfortunately for them they have a 37 se second gap on Quintana and Yevi up front yes and uh, we can see here Bacalans uh, he's out there holding out for a long time that tells me that the pace is not really strong here Sky you know just continue on setting a good pace not uh, any panic at the moment I'm not surprised because we're just uh, inside the 10 kilometers to go it's a long way on this time and uh, there's a you know a, a lot of time for the favorites and for Chris Froome if he's thinking of going in the attack if they have a plan of action well then you know uh, the uh, time is uh, on their side certainly with 10 kilometers to go there's you know, a huge amount of time to put in a big attack and make it stick well uh, time will run out uh, the pace at the moment uh, you're looking at Chris Froome here along with or alongside Alberto Contador and also Chris Froome they're taking a Musette which is not an easy thing to do because first of all we you know you have to we could see him grabbing the Musette there uh, then you have to you know get whatever you need to get out of it and here we see he's just getting rid of it very quickly and I reckon you will only take a drink and uh, maybe it's probably only a drink a fresh drink anyway and uh, but to be able to do that on the climb you have to be still comfortable if you're hanging on the rear here and you're trying to take a Musette to get the bottle out would be a battle well he did it and uh uh, uh, to be honest, I thought he was uh, looking for answers, but what he was looking for was sustenance. There we are, last take, and uh, not a flinch from Contador, who clearly understood exactly what he was asking for. 
and uh, actually no attack either from Contador while he took on that sustenance. Um, I don't know what that tells you, Sean. Well, I think that was a plan because uh, you know the Masur had to be out there uh, uh, um, at that point, you know, free very earlier on. He just didn't uh, get there in the last minute of the moment. So he was out ahead of the race. Uh, so yes, uh, Christopher Froome was you know just making contact with the director of sportive. Is he on the climb? Where? What point is? What point is he at? And we could see there, Froome was ready just to take it. And uh, it is important today. You know, we have 232 33 kilometres done uh, to take on enough liquids here. So important. And even inside this final 10 kilometres, you have to be so careful that they do not run out. First of all, you have to be, you know, eat well today, keep on taking the uh, energy bars, the gels, but, you know, the liquid intake is so important. And uh, even at this point, you still have to be careful with that because you can run out. Such an energy sapping climb here, you have to be real careful. It is uh, hugely energy sapping, that's what it's all about. And uh, they're all engaging in uh, drinks, and that's why there's no attack. Contador himself requiring sustenance and uh, the attrition rate goes on. Peter Kenyuk who uh, took a visit into the Hawthorne bushes earlier on in this tour has uh, also done his duty for today and he's almost at a virtual standstill. Yes, and I'm not surprised because he has been making the pace there for a number of kilometres on the front and uh, setting a real good pace because we can see Quintana is not pulling out a big advantage and you know Quintana gives the impression that he's not really giving a big effort but that guy is going very fast, he's a super climber uh, so Kenick has done a good job and when you pull over you know you're right till you're dead and he was certainly totally empty there. Um, now, just for your own notes, uh, and indeed for ours, it's going to be uh, it's going to be old-style pencils and stopwatches. Once they get beyond the tree line, um, the uh, transponder relays are, have failed beyond the tree line, and that means that the gaps <laughs> are going to have to be visual. So um, that gap has stayed solid at 47 seconds, and it may well be that uh, that is in error. We're being told that uh, the gaps uh, cannot be relayed all the way to the top. Now, I still don't know whether that's, uh, that's solid, but I do know that Andrew Talansky is suffering. 9.1 to go. And uh, maybe now is the time to just increase the tempo. And here we go. Sky followed by Saxo Tinkoff with Alberto Contador. Astana also here. Uh, AG2 on the Mondial have not given up. Uh, Herbert Dupont, I think it is, that's there for them. Uh, Lotto Belisol also involved with a, a golden shoulders. Uh, about the, the best of uh, their climbers. Uh, still involved. 8.9 kilometers to go. And uh, still Roman Bardet now who's been uh, such a great part of this Tour de France. Oh, hello. Well, you know, uh, it was designed to be tough, Sean, and we're seeing that right now. And Michael Kwiatkowski may well be handing over that uh, young rider's jersey at the end of today. Yes, and we see uh, Montfort as well, who is, you know, open the general classification. He's at just over 10 minutes, so uh, the pace by Richie Port is uh, catching out some of the guys. You know, since he of taking on uh, the work on the front of the group of uh, Christopher Froome here, uh, Ryder starting to lose context. Talansky was another one, you know, a real good climber, so this group is just getting smaller every... Uh, every, every bit more we go up this climb, those guys starting to go out the rear door. Well, as Trevor McGrath reminds us, Peter Kenyuk is one heck of a rider. Absolutely top draw stuff. Dan Martin. It's been great watching him. <laughs> yeah, you want him to get found out. And unfortunately, Dan Martin is one of those. He's chugging away here, but uh, it's just too much today. Yes, uh, just that pace being injected uh, by... Uh Richie Port, uh, Daniel Moreno also from Katusha, another real good climber, having difficulty here, just uh, living with the pace being set by Port. Well, he did a great job into uh, Bigora, but this is a whole different kettle of fish that we're dealing with today. 8.6 kilometers only remaining, 45 seconds. You know, it's holding steady, and still it goes on, and Robert Jasink in uh, suffering mode. You know, Sean, uh, we've said before on other days that the quality of the riders that come to the Tour de France is uh, the highest that you can possibly find. And on a day like today, when you really do this amazing sifting and you get glimpses of who will be the winner. And indeed, uh, our favourite, Chris Froome, is right there with Contador bobbing away behind him. Yes, it, it's just quite remarkable to see top riders suffering like this. 
Oh, Valverde just going backwards here. Uh, we've seen him do this again and again. It's not been his tour. No, not been his tour. And this is the real test, I suppose. He had a real good in the Pyrenees. He had a good run uh, to X3 domain, uh, but getting more into difficulty here. We can see uh, Purito Rodriguez also just in front of him there, uh, starting to you know, struggle a bit as well. And we can see gaps appearing. Um, um, it's just that this climb is such a killer. It's a long, long one to Shelley Renard. Eight kilometers of a very, very difficult percentage, and it's, it's showing the weaknesses in any anybody a little bit of weakness we're seeing it at the moment. Look at that gap now. The splits are all over this mountain. Chris Froome is still where it matters at the moment, and indeed they're closing the gap on those up the road. 31 seconds now to Quintana, and indeed uh, Nieve up ahead, and Contador still there. Some people say this morning, Sean, that Alberto Contador might have what it takes today. Well, for the moment, looking good, we see uh, Klusinger from uh, the team of uh, Alberto Contador, Saxo Tinkoff, also in difficulty. Two moments ago, they had three from uh, Saxo Bank. Uh, they had Klusinger, they had Mick Rogers there, uh, but uh, Richie Port uh, just putting in another uh, another little bit of up in pace here, and uh, you know a lot of the riders just not able to match it here. And now uh, looks like Contador uh, certainly better than he was in the Pyrenees because there he was in difficulty in the very beginning kilometres of the climb here looking comfortable and uh, it's going to be an interesting one who will go in the attack force will it be uh Froome? will it be contador who put in a big attack we just passed by Molina, uh has done such great work second to, to Froome, don't forget he won't be by the end of today uh perot as well from ag2r in there uh, white and brown also uh failing unfortunately at this point uh Joaquin rodriguez perito as he's known also found out and quintana and niev have now just 50 15 seconds well um, they instilled this moment they basically provided the platform and two men have stood up three in fact if you can't uh, Richie Port uh, Richie Port has done his job though and Chris Froome comes up alongside fantastic to see Port's uh, legs are back after his uh, failure previously well uh, well, somebody's picked up a, a wild boar there and uh, well the wild man of the mountains maybe it is Quintana maybe he can find another kick but he's got to do it on his own because Niev now has been dropped by him and he pushes on he knows that the gap is closing 15 seconds and it's about just picking up something today but it's not going to be victory for these guys it looks like it's going to be Froome versus Contador Contador yet again involved in a shootout on this mountain yes for the moment, uh, we hear Quintana is out in front. They're talking about an attack, but it wasn't really attack. He just kept on riding, maybe just up the pace a little bit. And uh, we can see Navy not able to match it. But uh, Richie Port, you know, really impressive once again today, as he as he can be, as we've seen in the past. And uh, uh, the question is now, who is the better of the two? As we see Froome oh, here going. He's increased the pace, and Contador stays with him. Totally different cadence, as you can see. Uh, they bridge over. Bye-bye, Nieve. And Froome's gone. He's gone! Oh, this is glorious! Kicks away and said, this mountain is mine, this jersey is mine, this Tour de France belongs to me. That's the message he's sending out. Can he deliver it? I, I'll be bound. He's going to. Well, uh, what an attack there. Still with seven kilometers to go, and he just goes off in a sprint. Contador, you know, making a huge effort to try and stay in his slipstream and um, not, not, not capable of doing it, but... Uh, looking so impressive from and uh, i think from was feeling well because when you see sky setting the pace and then richie port really you know opened the pace making it so difficult for everybody from had to be feeling good and never seen the answer well there are plenty of ways of delivering a message and you look at the shoulders of alberto contador and they sag and wave the head starts to shake and he knows what he's just seen and it's something quite remarkable there's quintana there's Chris Froome. These two are going to put some solid time between themselves and everybody else. Looks like Quintana will get to the top of this mountain and sparing any nutcases. So will Chris Froome here. Thank goodness he gets beaked off by the officials. Thank goodness for that. There'll be more. Let's hope everyone stays safe with just 6.8 kilometers to go. Contador could find the legs again, let's not forget, but Froome's bridging over to Quintana and these two may well just work together.
Well, yes, um, I think, yes, we could see the two of them working together because, uh, of course, Quintana, you know, he is uh, very strong on the climb. He's a pure climber, but uh, with Christopher Froome, will he be able to live with the pace of Froome as he comes up to him very quickly? Um, Contador, we could see there, he lost a huge amount of time. We could see there in the straight, he wasn't in view at all. Uh, and I'm not surprised with the attack of uh, Christopher Froome. Now the question is, can Contador recover a bit and limit his losses? Fabulous moment, as uh, Richie Port says, go boy, and he did. Oh, amazing, and he's just spent past Quintana while we were looking at that. Look at this, he's off. Chris Froome wants to win this like a total superior being. It's amazing, you know, to to, 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 to put in the attack with uh, Contador, and then when he comes across to Quintana, <laughs> again, just one of these for killer of a sprint, and uh, Quintana, you know, just trying here, will he get back to Mini's wheel? Quintana, you know, he is uh, a solid climber, he just walk away out of it, but uh, Froome, really impressive today. Well, what end to that man's talents. There is Alberto Contador, a man who knows this mountain, let's not forget. A man who's ridden it, has contested it, and now this time he knows he's been beaten. There's one man going to beat this mountain. It's going to be one of these two, and I'll be bound. It's going to be the man in the yellow jersey. Take nothing away from Quintana. His team have been superb today. They put in the pace. They set this up the platform. It was Quintana's move that really broke everything apart. And the only man who just picked up a piece of wreckage stood upon it and said, you know, I'm still in this game more than that. I'm winning it. Chris Froome. And look at him go. He is driving through the crowd here. 6.2 to go. And the gap is widening short. Yes, we could see there the 28 seconds we're hearing here. Uh the advantage for Froome over Contador uh, we could see there just some moments ago on a straighter section with uh, the camera following Contador we uh, Froome totally out of sight with Quintana now uh, Nieve this is going to be an interesting one because if Nieve uh, you know keeps on pulling like this we must remember we're just inside six kilometers ago uh, everybody is open to you know, get into difficulty in the final number of kilometers uh, and Chris Froome you know he is putting in big attacks we can see here he's looking at uh, Quintana and making him come to the front do some of the pulling on front come on then, my friend let's share this he says let's make a hole in this crowd and just listen to the fans goodness me that's a first uh, somebody's own camera on a boom not a great one uh, let's hope that doesn't become a fashion 5.8 kilometers to go and these two guys are fashioning a victory for themselves, Sean. I can't see them being caught. They look so comfortable, and indeed now comfortable together. Yes, well, uh, when they walk together, that is an important thing here for Chris Froome. We could see there, you know, he just uh, pushed uh, Quintana to the front there a bit, you know, looked at him and made him uh, get into the uh, front position, and uh, that is important. They work well together because we have Contador and Navy here, and we can see the discussion here. They're having a chat, and... Uh, Navy doing a real good job here for the moment and we did hear around the 30 seconds an advantage and I think that's going to grow out from here on because it looks like Contador is not uh, uh, not looking good to me. Quintana, he's going to take great inroads into those who lie in front of him, save for Chris Froome of course, uh, but he may well be the, finding himself on uh, the virtual podium at the end of today 5.5 kilometers a little bit less than that now doesn't sound like much it's going to take a long time for some of these guys Richie Port looks back gets the radio message job well done fella it was amazing they did have the firepower to deliver Chris Froome to where he needed to be and right now he's up the road just he and Quintana at the head being chased on by uh, Niev and Contador and we look further back and we see Welcome, Olimar. Started the day in second place, two minutes and 28 behind Chris Froome. And the dream, unfortunately for him, I think he's just woken up to exactly what the Von 2 can do. Yes, and we can see there just over the minutes uh, for Boyko Malema, Ten Dam, Kruisinger, uh, Mick Rogers, and um, all there. And uh, Contador still at around 29, 30 seconds, so um, all working quite well for the moment. Will that stabilise at that? Uh, you know, we can see up front the two uh, men leading, uh, Chris Froome and uh, Quintana, pushing on quite well. Interesting to see now, will the grab go further out? Five kilometres to go, 25 seconds between Froome and Contador, and one minute, a little bit more than that, uh, back to the main bunch of pursuers that are left 
a 21 uh, man band of uh, poor souls who are being brutalized on this mountain and Chris Froome looks like he's out for a Sunday afternoon ride this is remarkable big gain here is going to be Quintana what a lead man Yes, well, Quintana is uh, going to be, uh, move up a lot in the general classification, but also in the uh, white jersey classification. We can see here um, the point uh, Chris Froome was at is a little bit of a tailwind at the moment. That's important as well because uh, the group of other uh, favourites, Tendam, Molema, there's quite a number of guys there over a minute down, but uh, it would be advantage to them if there's a number of them pulling on the front. But uh, with the tailwinds here, it's going to be not such a difficult one for the two leaders and their two chasers. Contador looks over and says to Niev, what legs have you got? I think the answer was, sadly, only two. And today, well, oh, goodness me, they needed to be very strong legs. And 4.4 uh, kilometres to go. 28 seconds we're hearing. It's just extended a little bit on race radio. Uh, that's our only reference point because graphically, unfortunately, at the top of the VON2, we've had a minor failure. Uh, nothing f uh, failing about these guys, though. Their determination uh, to hold station, but it's not, Sean. 30 seconds now. Yes, uh, 30 seconds, but uh, they're working quite well at it because, uh, you know, we can see out front uh, that two, uh, our two leaders on the road are... Uh, look to be riding very strong and that advantage is not growing out it's uh, starting to you know, uh, stabilize there at that 30 seconds and it looks like it could be uh, with navy just putting in a lot of the uh, the work most of the work certainly he seems to be the one is doing uh, the uh, big amount of the work here contador just uh, happy to follow well uh, we're looking at uh, some of those who have been beaten today. Uh, Alejandro Valverde, uh, quality rider, but just not his year. That is Joaquin Rodriguez, nearest to us uh, from uh, Katusha. I beg your pardon, that is Moreno uh, Rodriguez, also as well, found out today. Uh, there is the four kilometer to go banner. Let's just talk them in, Sean. Uh, this is between six and nine uh, percent, but the last two kilometers really are brutal. Yes, the last two kilometers does uh, up again in uh, percentage-wise, and uh, uh, it will be interesting to see our two leaders, what will they do here? Will they continue on riding together and uh, go to the finish in that way, or will we see some more attacks? And the Christopher Froome attacks earlier, it was impressive. Well, the crowds are passionate. They've been here for an awful long time. This is what they've been waiting for, so you'll forgive them their excitement. Let's just hope that doesn't boil over, and he's just turned up the pace once again. This is a little flatter section of respite, Sean, before the last two kilometres, so they've got 1,700 metres at the moment, just to put a bit of extra distance in before that final last round. Yes, well, I think uh, Chris Rome is thinking of, you know, Contador and the other favourites down the road. He wants to pull as uh, much an advantage as possible out of uh, those guys and uh, it's, it's a section here with three and a half kilometers to go it's a little bit easier here and Chris Froome when he puts in that acceleration well then he's going to put Quintana in a bit of difficulty when he gets the more steeper part in the final two kilometers that's where Quintana will have the advantage because it does up to the uh, up to the line the final kilometer the kilometer and a half the percentage is very steep Chris Froome rode Mont Ventoux uh, for the first time with Sean Kelly, Kelly not very long ago. Not the first time with Sean Kelly, his first time on the Von 2. And as a debutant then, he said it's now quantifiable. He's able to picture it in his mind. He has mapped it out and they have drawn up a strategy and it is being delivered almost to perfection. It's not over yet and Quintana is with him. So are quite a number of fans, as you can see. A little bit thinner on the ground at this part of the mountain, so we'll take that as a blessing. 3.2 kilometers to go until this day is done and I'll be bound that at the end of this day the gap between Chris Froome and everybody else will be significant. Yes, um, it will be interesting to see how significant it will be. We can see here that you know, Froome again, he seems to be uh, wanting to talk to his director and when you see a rider doing that, it tells it that he still has quite a bit left because if you're really on the rivet and just hanging on the rider, setting the pace, it's so difficult just to leave your handlebars go, take one hand off your handlebar, it is a difficult thing to do and he seems to be doing that uh, quite comfortable on the time. He was doing it very early but still at it, so it looks like that he is... Uh, feeling good all the time yes if you're if you're putting the power through the back wheel with your legs and you're nice and comfortable it uh, gives some respite to your arms if you're actually pulling on the bars and uh, you take one hand off then uh, you are in serious trouble and uh, Chris Froome is driving this one home light of grip I think what finesse
what picture is he drawing for us right now? It's a beautiful one. 2.8 kilometers to go. In 800 meters time, the toughest part of this climb will reveal itself. Here we go. Froome and Quintana still on the radio. What on earth is he asking for? Surely not champagne. Quintana at the front, along with Christopher Froome. And these two now have such a comfortable gap. It's 50 seconds, 50 seconds back to Niev and Contador, the nearest men to them. Richie Port just smiling, and he looks over the mountain. And uh, this is a man at ease with himself, and indeed his role, a hero for Sky for the future, most certainly. But uh, <laughs> for me, he's been a hero today. He's done a great job. He's found his legs again, Sean. Yes, well, he's a Richie Port that we've seen so many times in the past, and uh, what damage he done today when he started, you know, taking the uh, pace setting after uh, Peter Kenneck, you know, set an unbelievable pace as well, because both of them killed off a lot of very big names here, especially Richie Port. He just, you know, blew this group apart, and um, it's what he's capable of doing, and we can see there the advantage. 50 seconds back to Contador, uh, our two leaders, uh, Froome and uh, Quintana, gaining all the time, and uh, the other big favourite slipping further down 145 of that group of Malema, Tendam and the rest. 2.4 kilometres to go, a little bit less than that right now, and these guys have been working extraordinarily well together. They've had their own conversations. Uh, Contador and Niev, likewise, a little bit further down the mountain. In fact, uh, uh, quite a bit further down the mountain. We don't have a graphical representation of that gap, uh, but it ha has grown. Uh, the clouds are starting to form on the top of the mountain. Thank goodness we've had no rain. That would have been uh, almost a cruel addition to what has been uh, the cruelest day so far. Except for this man. It looks like it might even be a joy. What an effort. I cannot wait for us to have a chat with him at the end of the day. And indeed, chapeau to Quintana who started this all. It was his bravery that really opened up this box. And out of it, wow, stood Chris Froome. Finally alone and without teammates after great effort. The last man standing, Richie Port. 2K to go then, and this, Sean, must be a glorious two, two kilometres. Uh, you know you've done the job, and it's just a question of dispatching it. I'm wondering whether Chris Froome is going to have an injection of pace even now. Well, I'd not be surprised if he does have an injection of pace, because to win in the 1-1-2, um, we've... Um, We've heard Christopher Froome talk as of recent as yesterday. He said, you know, the Mont the Mont Bonteau is a monument, is a great place to win. It's such an important stage, and uh, he's going to, you know, give this one a big go. And I think, yeah, the opportunity for him here, uh, it's equal uh, as it is for Quintana. Both of them are, you know, real good climbers here, and. Uh, you're, you're suffering big time here, but when you're out in front, you just don't feel that pain as much. And uh, you know the, the advantage uh, back to the advantage for Froome back to Contador, 54 seconds, growing slowly all the time. 51 seconds it is now, and uh, forming part of the radio traffic because uh, visually, uh, they also have uh, the same pictures as uh, we've got on occasion within the cars. I think they'll be translating from race radio and relaying back to these guys. Uh, Chris Froome though knows as the elbow flicks out, it says, "Come on to Quintana." Well, they say this no gifts i wonder whether chris Froome might just uh, give quintana one on this mountain he's riding with him at the moment i i suspect it will depend entirely on how much effort he feels that quintana is putting in right now yes um well i think they are uh, they are working well together they're you know sharing the pulling on the front uh, the problem for Chris Froome when he's in the wheel of Quintana, there's not a lot of shelter here. It's almost the same as if, if you're on the front yourself. But still, you know, mentally it's good to get the rider that's with you out front uh, to go on the front and, you know, set the pace a bit. But uh, I'm, I'd be surprised if we see any uh, gift of a stage victory here. It's so important for both riders out in front to try and get the stage victory. On the flat ride into San Amman, the wind blew. And Alberto Contador and his Saxo Tinkoff team went on the attack. Oh. They stole a minute oh, from Chris Froome as uh, Quintana gets distance. There are no gifts up here. Absolutely not. He wants that minute back. Froome did not like giving that away to Contador. And he's going to take as much time as he likes right now. And he is attacking on his own. Chapeau. Yes, and um, again, you know, he just puts in these uh, killer of attack and... Uh, he, 
Quintana, of course, been out there for a long time. A small, lightweight rider. He you know, went in the attack very early, so he's probably paying a little bit for the efforts. But to live with Froome, the way he's riding today, the form he's on, nobody able to do that. Well, he's potentially going to put more time between himself and Contador than Contador took from him on that open run where the wind blew and the splits came. Santa Mar, we've had splits today, but it's all been about visceral strength and indeed total focus. And as he approaches the Flamme Rouge, Chris Froome is riding like a champion in waiting. This has been one of the gutsiest performances we have seen from this man. And that is a very, it's a collection of very top draw performances let's not forget and away he goes he's going to be a lone winner up here today Quintana nearest man to him now 11 seconds down and a further minute behind is Contador and Niev Molima minute and 45 he's picked it up that shows great battling by uh, the Belkin rider and all credit to him they need to find something extra today because it could come down to seconds uh, Sean uh, despite the fact we said it might well be minutes and look at this drive to push on Belkin doing a fantastic job of just trying to stay in touch and maybe save themselves for another day. Well, we see the Belkin riders, Tim Dam, of course, with Malema here. Uh, pretty uh, flat on the bike. He looks like to be that also at the end of his powers here, but uh, Tim Dam just setting a good pace, and they've got to do that. When you've got two riders from Belkin, uh, you have to try and just limit your losses, keep on pushing here, and uh, we've been hearing, you know, the advantage is rolling out, but uh, they're going to try and just limit it to as much as possible. On the toughest day, you have to have strong will and indeed strong legs. And it is an amazing combination that is within this man. He wears the number one, and today, let there be no doubt, he wears that yellow jersey and intends to carry it all the way to Paris. He's carried himself. He was, of course, nursed by his team at the beginning of the day. Nursing? <laughs> what a guy. He has so much strength. Maybe he wouldn't have needed any assistance, but he got it. And that help has helped him to this point. Quintana is down the mountain, and indeed so is everybody else. Look at this, and listen to the crowd welcoming a true champion in waiting. There's the one kilometer to go. The Flamme Rouge beckons, and they're battling for minor places now. And Perito has found something else. Joaquin Rodriguez comes out of the saddle and decides uh, that he's going to have a pretty good finish today. It's not going to be victory. Oh, no. It's going to go to the yellow jersey. And Chris Froome, well, they say to be a true champion, you have to win a stage. Well, he's already got one under his belt, the Axe Trois de Main. He's going to take this. And I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a few more along this road. It's uh, Tour de France. is not over. But we may well have found the champion. Quite remarkable. Mont Ventoux, the big one. And he is the master of it. The line beckons and Chris Froome is going to be so relieved and indeed so are we. And I think everybody else that the hurt is over. What a performance by Chris Froome and they still just look at each other further down the mountain here. They've got a lot of climbing to do. This man is approaching the line. Yes, and uh, he is eating into the uh, uh, the advantage he's pulling out of Quintana. We're hearing there it's growing out very quickly. We could see Quintana in difficulty as he comes around the final corner. You know, what a performance by... Uh, Froome and the yellow jersey, it just proves that he is the man to beat in this year's Tour de France. Now we're going to see a big shake up in the general classification and especially Chris Froome, you know, putting his advantage out once again with this really difficult finish at 1-2. There 